Trexperts would like to begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we record. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders listening to us today. You're listening to BQN. Assimilate the audio. Welcome back, dear listeners and viewers, to this, the Season 2 premiere of the Trexperts Quiz. This is the Star Trek-inspired trivia podcast where each week we put a bunch of self-proclaimed Star Trek experts or Trexperts into a head-to-head battle for nerd supremacy to bring glory to themselves and their houses. I am your host, back again. My name is Davey Willett, and I go by the pronouns he and him, and it is my pleasure to be stealing the Enterprise with you to seek out Star Trek knowledge against Admiral April's orders today. If you know, you know. Hopefully I haven't spoiled anything for anyone, but, you know, by the time this comes out, should be old news. Uh, A big shout out, first of all, to our BQN patrons, especially a big thank you to this show's associate producers, the fabulous Matt Harker, Jason Anderson, and Lars Desenza from the Red Shirt Geeks. Thank you so much to all of you for your support. And don't forget, you can help keep bringing Trexperts Quiz and all the other fabulous BQN shows to you week by week by signing up to be a patron at patreon.com slash BQN. It is Pride Month all over the world right now, so today we have a panel of contestants from right across the full Pride rainbow and a quiz that covers Star Trek's ability or inability at times to deal with LGBTQIA plus issues, along with the actors, characters and creators behind the camera who are a part of the rainbow family. So first, I would like to introduce to you my co-host, scorekeeper, and official adjudicator for today. From Strange New Pod with she, her pronouns, it is MC. Back again. MC, welcome back to the quiz. How you been? Hi. I've been good. I've been good. I've been looking forward to coming back. So, And I'm really glad to be back for the Pride episode. I know it's exciting to have you back on for our our first round. Um, let's hope that I'm not too rusty at this whole hosting gig. But you're you're a seasoned scorekeeper now. I think this yeah. is your your second or third time, so you've got a yeah. down pat. You've got a down pat. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So this is our our special Pride round, and I can see you're wearing a a fabulous little Pride uniform there as well. By the way, that is really really cool. I need (laughs) I need more I need more Pride themed Star Trek stuff. I actually don't have much, but oh, all of the Pride themed Star Trek stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just my little just my little Pride insignia here on my microphone. But you know that's all good. That's all good. Um, But you know, given that it's Pride Month, MC, I'm I'm asking everyone today, and I was interested to hear your thoughts on this. What does Pride Month mean to you? Uh, It means uh, a reminder to myself to be prideful because I came out when I was 14, but when I was 33, my aunt said to me, in our entire family, I'm surprised that no one has ever come out as gay. And I'm like, wait, what? So it was a reminder to me that I've got to be loud. Yeah, absolutely. Like, let that bright spark shine. That's amazing. <laughs> and what a nice push from your aunt as well, by the way. It's just like, yeah. mate, do, do you think she knew? She was sort of like... <laughs> uh, no, I I, th- I think it was an honest like question of like, in our family of 30 plus people, how has nobody come out? And of course, since me, several more people have come out. So yay, trailblazer. Oh, there you go. That's amazing. I, as far as I know, I'm still the only one in my family, which I find surprising because my mum is the youngest of 10 kids. So so (laughs) how that group of extended cousins and aunties and uncles that there is no one else um, within the queer family that... (laughs) Um, I mean, I don't keep in contact with all of them, so who knows? Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, might be it. Yeah, 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 there might yeah. be someone like me who is just like, wait, was I ever in? Because that was exactly <laughs> what I said to her. Uh, yeah. no, excellent. Well, MC, it's great to have you here for Pride Round. Uh, and we have got some 
fabulous contestants lined up today. I'm so excited. So let's let's meet the first one now. I'm going to energize the transporter. Our first contestant comes to us with they, them pronouns, and uh, they've been on the show before, actually. I'm very, very excited to welcome back from the Spinal Frontier, my good friend, Erin. Erin, welcome back to the quiz. Hi, everyone. (laughs) How have you been? Oh, I've been pretty good. Um, Enjoying the summer, enjoying the first half of Pride Month so far. Excellent. And uh, enjoying the summer. And so this is where I start to get jealous because I think I spent most of my first season lording it all over my contestants that I was in the middle of the Australian summer. It's now, yeah, the dead of winter here and it is freezing. So I hope you are enjoying that beautiful uh, Californian sunshine. It came out for the first time this season today. Oh, amazing. There you go. Just in, yeah. t- just in time for Trexperts. What, yeah. <laughs> what a sign from whatever deity you believe in. Um, <laughs> so, Erin, same question to you that I just asked to MC. What does Pride Month mean to you? I think to me it means an invitation um, for people to ask questions about themselves. I... Personally, I didn't come out until I was in my early 30s. Um, And I didn't even start asking those questions of myself until uh, I was 28 or so, you know? And by being visible, by embracing ourselves, um, maybe there's people out there that can ask themselves what's inside. That's a, that's beautiful and and what a, a really fabulous journey. So thank you for, for sharing that that little tidbit with us. I know that we could probably create a whole, whole podcast or go and diving a little bit deeper into that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and, and isn't that interesting how it can mean so many different things to so many different people depending on what your, your individual experience is. And it's becoming so much bigger all over the world now you know, Pride Month was, I always found was typically sort of like a North American thing, but it seems to, this June Pride Month seems to have extended globally now. And yeah, more people are kind of getting a chance to peer in and go, oh, what does this mean? And what does this mean to me? And what does this mean about myself? So, hmm, beautiful. Well, we're, we're excited to have you back for a bit of Star Trek Pride trivia. And we've got two more contestants uh, to bring in. So I'm going to engage that transporter a uh, second time. Very excited to welcome back our second contestant. Uh, He goes by he, him pronouns and is the field director for Equality Texas, the state's largest LGBTQ plus advocacy organization focusing on empowering LGBTQ plus people and their allies to take action in support of LGBTQ plus Texans. It is the fabulous Brad. Brad Pritchett, welcome back to the quiz, my friend. Thank you. I'm even in like Equality Texas merch today because I was at a Pride event before I came to do this. You are one of the busiest <laughs> little advocates I've ever seen on social media. Brad and I are friends on Facebook. And the the, the work you are doing down there in Texas looks fabulous um brad like if if anyone hasn't ever checked out what equality texas is up to brad and and his team are relentless in in their in their advocacy and their support for for the lgbtq plus texans and lgbtq plus people around the world in general so thank you for the work that you're doing there brad it's really amazing there's plenty of work to go around (laughs) i bet i bet i bet now now brad same question now, and I bet you've got an interesting answer to this. What, what does Pride Month mean to you, apart from a very busy time? <laughs> right. Well, busy. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, when I think about Pride Month, the, like, my focus for most Pride Months is just about queer joy um, and community. So, you know, I live in Texas, obviously. There are a lot of people in Texas who don't like queer folks and are doing everything they can to drive us either out of the state or rob us of our ability to get access to health care or to enjoy drag brunches anymore Mm. and a variety of other awful, terrible things. 
So when we move into Pride Month, like I want people to focus on the community aspect of Pride and really leaning into like chosen family and knowing that you have a community that has your back 365 days a year, not just during Pride Month, and really just finding every opportunity to celebrate queer joy that we have during June so that we can re kind of refuel ourselves <laughs> on queer joy and then continue moving forward once the Pride Month has ended because for queer people, you have to have that inner pride going on 365 days a year. Otherwise, how do we sustain ourselves? So for me, it's mainly about community. It's about queer joy. And it's about finding every opportunity we can to celebrate our community. <laughs> uh, fabulous, Brad. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's meet your final competitor for today. Our third competitor is a first-time Trexperts quizzer coming at us with she, her pronouns from the fantastic Women at Warp podcast. It is Sue. Sue, welcome to the quiz for the first time. Yay! Thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm always excited when I get an opportunity to work with someone from Women at Warp. It's always a lot of fun. We had Jara on uh, during the first season, and she was a lot of fun to have on the show. Uh, and and now we've got your good self. So, so Sue, same question. Pride Month, what does it mean to you? Yeah, for me, it is a renewal of a call to activism. Uh, mm. You know, we have come a long way as a community since Stonewall, but there is still so, so far to go. I believe that. I mean, let's let's get away. In my mind, I want to get away from the word parade and go to mm. the word march. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the internalized issues that we have inside the community as well as outside i want to talk about how it's not marriage equality until a disabled person can be married and not lose their benefits so all of that comes back up for me every pride and it, it's it's a renewal of the energy to to fight for our rights and to fight for for to, to be treated or i should say equity hmm. right to be treated like everybody else to have the same opportunities and to not have to fight anymore. That's the end goal, is to not have to fight anymore. Excellent. So, Pride Month means many things to many ones. So, we are here today to do a little quiz on <laughs> Pride in Star Trek. Hmm. <laughs> and it, an interesting topic. You know, we, we do know... Uh, it, interestingly, Star Trek does have a huge queer following massive massive but we've only seen ourselves represented properly probably only in the last sort of six or seven years in in the franchise's nearly 60 year history so to do a whole quiz based on this was a little bit challenging so bear with us everyone um i was telling everyone before we started recording that there will be some star trek pride questions sort of pride adjacent kind of questions but a lot of stuff focusing on on the wonderful characters and creatives uh and the storylines around those characters and creatives as well so we are gonna jump straight into the questions so i hope you've got your buzzers ready for our first round, which is a bit of a general knowledge round. Question one. In what year did George Takei officially come out as a gay man? <laughs> No harm in guessing, guys. That's right. Yeah, you don't lose points for guessing. Aaron? 2002? Negative. Afraid uh, not. Clear the buzzers. The other two can have a go. Brad? 2007. <laughs> Negative. So I'll give you a free shot. You can take a guess at a year. 1998. Negative. Afraid not. It was 2005. Uh, and I'll, I'll throw open for a... Bo there was a bonus point here, which so I'll throw it open to everyone. Uh, what is his partner's name? Oh, I know that one. Brad. <laughs> Ooh. You didn't buzz. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I turned off. There, now I buzzed. <laughs> 
Aaron did buzz before you. <laughs> Aaron, Sorry. what what what's the answer? <laughs> Brad, but I want to give it to Sue because I no, I have a phone correct. that also messes me up all the time. <laughs> I'm gonna go into my settings and turn off auto lock, and that's what's gonna happen. All right, we've got a, a point on the board there for Aaron. <laughs> Well done, well done. All right. Um, yeah. So th- that it, whilst he officially came out in two thousand and five publicly, um, they had been together for about twenty years at that point, and it was at that point in time that George felt he could finally speak his truth. All right. Second question. Fan fiction writers have often created pieces that depict a sexual relationship between Kirk and Spock. What is the name for this type of fiction? Brad? Slash fiction? That is correct. Well done. That is correct. Yes. Slash fiction being a genre of fan fiction that focuses on romantic or sexual relationships between fictional characters of the same sex. MC, dare I ask, as as a, as a fanfic writer, have you ever written any slash yeah. fiction? You have. I done you it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I may have dabbled in it a little bit, uh, but interestingly, the way where the slash actually comes from is because people used to label it K slash S fix. Ah, there you go. And I, I love how there was no. He- I didn't even finish the question. You're like, yes, of course, I've written some slash fiction. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, Next question. Uh, Name the episode of Star Trek to feature the first same-sex kiss. Sue? Rejoined. That is correct. Well done. Yes, premiering in 1995, the show was able to use a science fiction storyline to depict two women kissing on screen, something that was difficult to get through network censors at the time. All right, so next question. In the episode The Outcast, Riker falls in love with a member of an androgynous race known as the Janai. What was the name of the Janai he fell in love with? Sue? Zorin. That is correct. It was correct. Uh, this interesting history this episode. Uh, there was, I found some quotes from Berman that sort of thought that this was a good metaphor for the experience of homosexual people at the time. Uh, although in, in hindsight, many feel it probably didn't go far enough and has there are some problematic element, elements to it, I think, through a modern lens. Um, but, it, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things. It's an early kind of dotting of, of where we see them trying. Um, but I, there's a lot of criticism as to whether they tried hard enough at that point. They get the you tried star. <laughs> yeah, well done by 90s standards. <laughs> okay, so this, this will be an interesting one. I wonder if I'll get any debate around this. Uh, when was the first on-screen appearance of a same-sex couple in Star Trek? Aaron? Is it uh, Stamets and Colbert and Discovery? Negative. That is not the answer I have. Brad or Sue, do you want to have a go? Sue? I believe there was supposed to be a same-sex couple in 10 Forward in The Offspring, but it got cut. But there is also talk that in TOS, you see a same-sex couple go into a hallway. Not, like, go from a hallway into a room in one scene in the background. Mm. But I do not remember the name of the episode. <laughs> the thing about the offspring is entirely true. Is it? It is, yeah. Um, Frakes wanted because to Rick have... Because Rick hates gay yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rick Berman hates you, everyone. There we go. Yeah, it's it. It is true. Rick Berman is problematic in this discussion quite a bit, but not not the not what I've got. So I'm looking. This is more the first like confirmed. It's definitely a same sex couple on screen in Star Trek. Brad, you, you want to take a shot at it? I feel like it has to be Deep Space Nine, but I can't figure out who it would be. <laughs> Negative. 
So the answer I was looking for was Sulu and his partner in Star Trek Beyond in 2016. <laughs> that doesn't count. Seen with his partner and daughter, something, and as I think as we all know, something that George Takei unfortunately did not fully endorse. He felt that Sulu was not written to be gay and that the film's writers could have gone further and been more exciting to have written a new gay hero to be in the film. Um, but yeah, as, as as best I could tell, that was the, that's the first official. You know, it's it's confirmed. They're definitely a same sex couple, um, even though it's it's a, a blink and you'll miss it kind of moment. Okay, next question, which is about Jet Reno. What species was Jet Reno's wife? <laughs> All right, no answer to that one. And I am probably going to butcher the pronunciation of this. MC, do you know how to pronounce this? Because I don't. <laughs> Soyusian? Yeah, yeah, Soyusian. Yeah, her, her wife has not actually been named, but Reno mentions that she died during the Klingon War and was totally bananas during their wedding planning. Um, oh, Sue buzzed in. Uh, that was an accident. <laughs> okay. <laughs> clear that i'm mean, sure you can answer now yeah yeah <laughs> can't guarantee you will give you a point for it but <laughs> all right our first question seven of nine star trek has recently featured four trans and or nine non-binary actors can you name all four aaron blue del barrio Yes. Um, Jesse James Keitel. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know this. Ian. Oh, I'm going to have to pass. All right. So you. That is correct. We'll give you the two points for the first two, I think, MC. And yep. I'll. Clear the buzzer if if Brad or Sue want to try and jump in. Sue, Ian Alexander and Celia Rose Gooding. Oh, Ooh. you didn't have Celia on the list. That is actually true. There's five of them then. Ah, there we go. I my my research has failed me, and I apologize for not acknowledging that of Celia Rose Gooding. So there are five. So I think we give Sue two points for that. And Brad, do you know who the last one is? No, I feel like Sue should get an extra point for correcting. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's it was bound i was very very cautious to make sure that i represented everything accurately in this and i failed miserably um so the last one i have uh is noah lamana who played chief j in the season opener of strange new worlds so i wonder if we'll be seeing more of noah as the series progresses such a new episode though <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, but, well, yeah. actually, oh, oh, oh dear, oh no, um, oh my god, what's their name? The alien in Picard on the bridge in season three is also both a non binary uh, alien and a non binary. Ah, oh, oh. Jin O'Malley, is that it? I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to check that one out, um, but no, that one didn't come up in in my research either. So I'm pleasantly surprised to say that there's at least six. Not uh, in fact, I started the <laughs> and, and um, MC can see this in the question sheet. I actually started with three and then moved it up to four yeah. <laughs> when I thought of when I watched Strange New Worlds and yeah. saw Noah. <laughs> All right, we'll have to double check that one on Picard. Um, but whilst we do, we do have... Gin Mally, not O'Malley. Gin Mally, there you go. Does Sue get a point for that? I... Let me see if I can uh, pull it up. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I believe you are right. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I will I will give a, part, a point for that. There you go. You know. 
That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> That's a well lot done. More points than they thought we were going to get for <laughs> seven of nine. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so second last question for the first round. Adira took on a true symbiote from Grey, who used to be joined to an admiral. What was the admiral's name? Sue? Oh. Um, Insufficient data. I'm looking for the full name. Good try, though. Yeah. Aaron? Senatal? That is correct. Correct. It was Admiral Senatal. Well done. Well done. All right. And the final question, which Kelvinverse actor publicly came out in 2011? Aaron? Zachary Quinto? That is correct. It was indeed Zachary Quinto. And I would actually love to see Zachary Quinto return to the screen as Spock because I personally loved him as Spock. I want to have a crossover where we have both Ethan Peck and Zachary Quinto on the screen so that I can go into hormonal overload. (laughs) (laughs) Something I think we'd all love for you and for for the Trek fans. (laughs) Oh uh, dear. All right. So that is the end of our first round. Well done, by the way, everyone. Really well done. MC, where did we land score wise? All right. So um, Aaron has five, Brad has one, and Sue has five. Well done. Well, well done. <laughs> Brad, you can catch up, mate. You can catch up. We'll see. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Our second round is a little bit more behind the camera. So more sort of behind the scenes uh, stuff about creatives or uh, some of the actors or characters in their personal lives. So, first question, hands on buzzers. Who was the openly gay showrunner who defended the death of Dr. Culper in season one of Discovery? Sue? It was Alex Kurtzman, wasn't it? Negative. No. Brad? Is it Akiva Goldsmith? Negative. No. Aaron, any idea? Uh, No, I've just been trying to think of something funny to say. (laughs) (laughs) Unable to comply. (laughs) So uh, his name is Aaron Harbitz. Uh, He was accused of using the bury your gaze trope in which LGBTQ plus characters are killed tragically and often in some kind of hate crime or or something worse. Uh, However, he stated that Culper died because he was the most intelligent person figuring out the Klingon plot and he did not die because he was gay and therefore in in his mind it was not a a bury your gay moment. Um, But I think... That one, I mean, that one's very open to (laughs) debate. (laughs) All right, next question. Writer David Gerald penned a TNG script that featured a gay couple. The episode never went into production. What was the name of the script? I think Sue Sue knows it. I can see you've got that tip of your tongue look on your face. Sue? Blood fever? Mm. Negative. I'm afraid not. Aaron and Brad, the buzz is open. Brad? Stonewall in space. <laughs> <laughs> Negative. <laughs> now that's going to be the next Star Trek show. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've read that what? fan fiction, I'm sure. Um <laughs> Aaron, free shot, any idea? Nope. Nope. 
Unable to no, comply. not really. <laughs> That's all right. It was called Blood and Fire. So, Sue, you, you definitely had it there. Yeah, so... The script allegedly dealt with the AIDS crisis at the time. Uh, there are conflicting stories about why it never got made into an episode. Uh, mostly that the studio was concerned with the show um, was airing during the afternoon in some areas. And at the time, they thought that such a storyline would be inappropriate for children. Uh-huh. Sure. Um, but then there's other stories as well that basically says, you know, Berman put the kibosh on it and all that kind of stuff. So who yeah, knows? Who knows? That's David Gerald's story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, a bonus point. You do have to buzz in for it, though. What famous TOS episode did David Gerald write? Sue? The Trouble with Tribbles. That is correct. That is indeed correct. Well done. Uh, next question. Where the tribbles are called bisexual. <laughs> Not what they mean, though. Yeah, exactly. So, there's some very early representation that none of us expected. <laughs> okay, next question. Which fan production would adapt Blood and Fire into a two-part episode? Sue? Star Trek continues? Negative. Nope. Brad, Aaron. Unable to comply. Star Trek Phase 2, uh, which the two-part episode was directed by David Gerald. All right. Which character is famously known to be queer, even though it was never acknowledged on screen? Brad. Garrick. That is correct. Yes, which uh, Andrew Robertson himself has acknowledged as being a part of how he played the character. And I find with that in mind, when you go back and see some of the early interactions between Garrick and Bashir, you're like, ooh, this is queer-coded and I'm loving it. <laughs> now, this is a very dangerously worded question. Like, you could just <laughs> yell out any character. And it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> true, true. But I, 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 I figured that it would... It would <laughs> It was, it was a, a well-known. <laughs> it's, it's been talked about a lot in recent times. Okay, the Enterprise episode Stigma was meant to be an allegory for what? Aaron? The AIDS crisis? That is correct. That is correct. Uh, Berman himself was quoted as saying that this was a way of dealing with, and I quote, gay issues, as it dealt with the stigma that early sufferers of AIDS experienced in the United States. Um, so in interesting one as, as to, and again, this is an, another example of one of those ones where I think it's, it's open to discussion around whether it went far enough, were they trying too hard, not hard enough. It's, as I said, some problematic examples of, of how Star Trek tried to deal with, with these issues at the time. Uh, Can I add to that context? Though? Yeah, of course, of course. I'm sorry. No, no, go. Um, this is not just a Star Trek thing. This was a network thing. Yeah. Every show on mm -hmm. the network had to do an aid story. Mm. It was required of them. So personally, I highly doubt that if not for that directive, this episode would exist. That's yeah, because it was something to do with World, World AIDS take... Day, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So, so you... any little bit of credit you want to give Berman, take it right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm definitely getting Sue's vibe towards Rick Berman. <laughs> <laughs> and fair enough, Sue. Fair enough. Absolutely. Look, I, I have had conversations with David Gerald. Oh, really? Many stories about Rick Berman. So... <laughs> ah. <laughs> That is my opinion of Rick Berman. All right. We're going to be spilling some tea on this episode of the Trexperts <laughs> Quiz. It's all coming from Sue and it's all about Rick Berman, but I am here for it. <laughs> so feel free to continue to spill as we progress. <laughs> all right. Next question. Gene Roddenberry includes references to bisexuality in the novelization of which Star Trek film? Two, the motion picture. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, allegedly, but I couldn't actually find the specific references in my research. Does anyone know them? 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Sue was about to turn around and grab the book off a shelf. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh. Here it is. <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. It's even got a rainbow on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's got flags in it, too. Because this book is bonkers. <laughs> uh, it's So he doesn't use the word bisexual, but... There's what is known as the Roddenberry footnote, which he tries to address fans um, who who want who write slash fic basically, yeah, and like try and and do away with the idea that Kirk and Spock are a couple, and has the 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 novelization is written from Kirk's perspective. It's bonkers, um, and uh, the the footnote is something along the lines of like. I, I've sampled all kinds of pleasures, but I find the best is the company of a woman or some <laughs> ridiculous thing. Well, well. That's almost Wild. word for word. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And we all knew that Roddenberry loved the company of women. Um, <laughs> again, problematically, but anyway. Uh, okay, there we go. I, it, it's interesting. I, I thought it would have been something a little bit more... Uh, I don't know how the right way to put it. I thought maybe it just would have been a reference to a character or something like that, but instead it's a an interesting footnote. And I've actually always meant to read that book, by the way. <laughs> you absolutely should. <laughs> All right, for our question seven of nine, we have seven points. Uh, and given my track record on these types of questions already, uh, I could have gotten some of these wrong or missed some. So please buzz in if you can name the seven actors in Discovery who are a part of the LGBTQIA plus rainbow. Brad. Brad. Oh my God, seven. Um, um, <laughs> so Wilson Cruz. Mm-hmm. Ian Alexander. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, why can I remember his name? Anthony, what is his last name? Rent person. <laughs> um, why I just blanked on his name completely. Uh, Anthony Rappaport. Uh, <laughs> very close. That's it. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. A A MC, it's does does he get that third one? I can give a half point on that. All right, so that's that's two and a half points. I'm gonna clear the buzzer. It's open. Like throw my. Who is Aaron? Was Aaron. Anthony Rapp. Correct. Yes. Uh, Blue Del Barrio. Yes. Mary Wiseman. Yes. How, how many are we at now? Uh, uh I we're at five now. Five. You've oh. got two more. Da, da, da. Tig Nataro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One more. Mm. All that's coming is uh, Strange New Worlds actors now. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hand over to Sue for... Do you know the last one that we're looking for? Emily Coots. Correct. Yes. So that was... One point for Sue, two and a half points for Brad, and four points for Aaron. Well done. Well done. Now, before I move on, did I miss any? <laughs> so it sounds like not. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So our second last question. So Jerry Ryan, Michelle Hurd, and which other Picard guest star helped plant the seed that Seven and Raffi should be a couple. Mm. Stump faces. Unable to comply. If you're unable to comply on that one, it was Jonathan Delarco. Uh, so in, a, in an interview that Jerry Ryan gave on the, I guess, the, the genesis of this as a storyline, um, Jonathan Delarco, who played Hugh and Michelle, sort of dropped a seed and then they picked it up and ran to the producers with it. 
Jerry Ryan said, we were at the network party at Comic-Con and we took a picture together. Michelle and Jerry and Johnny said, well, that's the hottest lesbian couple that never existed. And they both went, oh my God, that's it. That's perfect. They grabbed the phone. They ran and called the producers of the showrunners at the time, pitched the idea and they loved it. And that's so Jerry Ryan kind of said in the interview, it was kind of an accident. <laughs> Just an offhand oh. comment about the photo. <laughs> Jonathan Del Arco is the true Borg queen. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. That's definitely a comment I'm using in the promo. Um, <laughs> all right. Final question for our behind the scenes round. Wilson Cruz was a producer on which queer history docuseries? Tough one. Brad? Is it called We Rise? Negative. I'm afraid not. Cut the buzzer open again. Unable to comply. Unable to comply that one. It's called Visibility, out on television. Uh, has anyone ever seen it? No, no but I want to now. It, yeah, I'm uh, adding it to my list. It is really, really good. Um, it's uh, on Apple TV, I believe, uh, and it's about the the uh, basically the the story of uh, queer representation on on TV. All right, that's the end of our second round. This is a this is a fierce competition, by the way. I am loving it. Uh, MC, <clears throat> where are we at score wise? So that last round was uh, a little bit difficult for everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, Sue got three, Brad got 3.5, and Aaron got five, making the totals Brad with 4.5, Sue with eight, and Aaron in the lead with 10. Okay. <clears throat> Aaron and Sue, you were... Uh... Neck and neck at the end of the first round, but Aaron is just torn out in front. Now, <laughs> Brad, your your chance to catch up will definitely come in this round. Because I'm... Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All I'm going to say is question seven of nine in this round has 23 points <laughs> available. <laughs> You'll find out why when we get there. <laughs> MC, do you think anyone could get all 23? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I was being a little bit cheeky with that one, but we'll find out when we get there. Uh, this next round is a game that we haven't played for a little while. It's called Wait, They Were In That? And this is where we pick out our famous LGBTQ actors and I give you the name of another uh, film or TV show they have been in. There is two points up for grabs for each question. If you buzz in, you can get a point for telling me which actor was in that film or TV show. And you can get another point if you can tell me the name of the character that they played in that some of them are a little bit more obscure than others. <laughs> All right, let's see how well you know your IMDb pages. We're going to jump in with the first question. Uh, the first TV show is the TV show, My So-Called Life. Brad? Wilson Cruz. Correct. And it's the character Wilson Cruz play on that show, or yep. the character they play in Star Trek? No, the, the character, the character they play in. Um, sorry, the, the character it. they play on the show. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I didn't watch it. It was one. It was, it was a name. That's right. So that is correct. You get a point for Wilson Cruz, Sue. Sue, Ricky. That is correct. Yes, I'll, I'll get Jesse for some reason, but yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting one. So Ricky Vasquez was the name. And when I was looking for his IMDb page, I saw that he also appeared as Dennis Vasquez 
in 13 Reasons Why. And there was another show somewhere in there where he appeared as Dr. Vasquez. <laughs> We're going to go with the next one, which is the modern remake of Queer as Folk. Aaron? Jesse Janus Keitel played Rose. So... That is correct. Jesse James Keitel? Negative. Not R- not Rose. Sue or Brad, do you know the name of Jesse James Keitel's character in Queer as Folk? Nope. Unable to comply. You were close. It was Ruthie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I knew it was an R. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one is a movie uh, slash musical, Rent. Brad? Anthony Rapp. (laughs) (laughs) Not Anthony Rapport. (laughs) It's not Anthony Rapport this time. Uh, Um, And he played, um, hang on, I can think of this, the main character. I've seen Rent a thousand times. I, my brain just gone completely blank. I'm repeating a song in my head to try to get the name out of the song, and I can't think of it. Sing <laughs> uh, any song from Rent and Will. <laughs> 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 I'm doing like 17 songs in my head right now. In my head. Uh, dear. So, yeah, you are correct. That is correct. It was Anthony Rapp. Um, Sue or Aaron Buzzing, if you know Anthony Rapp's character's name. Sue? Mark. It is Mark. Mark Cohen. That is correct. Yes. On the High Holy Days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Love Eva Him is one of my favorite songs from that, actually. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one was the Netflix series, The OA. Brad? I did not mean to do that. <laughs> I was waking my screen up and it hit the button. I mean, it's not able to comply. <laughs> I didn't know idea. <laughs> All right, I'll clear the buzzer. It's open again. So the OA. Sue, Ian Alexander. Correct. That is correct. And I don't know the character name. Clear the buzzer. Um, I'm guessing Brad doesn't know it. Um, <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> nope. Never seen it. Unable to nope. comply. Uh, the character's name was Buck. Buck Vu. Uh, all right, so next one was the TV show Heroes. Aaron? Zachary Quinto played Silent. That is correct. Yes, two points. Well done. Well done. I think uh, Heroes was kind of where Zachary Quinto kind of first burst into the scene. That's, that's why I'm a Star Trek fan now. <laughs> <I'm Heroes. laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Although I did see in his IMDb, he was also in Charmed, but uncredited. So... Oh, wait, his <laughs> appearance in Charmed is so bad. Oh, really? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one. Now, this is going to be a very tricky one. Um, if anyone gets it, I'll be surprised. The Apple TV series C. Yeah, it is Noah Lamana, Chief J, from the first episode of Strange New World Season 2, uh, credited as playing Scent Chef. MC, we have got our work cut out for us with this mm. next one. I, I've got a lot of them yeah. written down here in uh, pen and paper. So, basically, for this next question, there are 23 points available. Now, if you buzz in... You can go as many as you can until you get one wrong. If you get one wrong, you're out and it'll go to someone else. Now, when I looked at George Takai's IMDb page, I found 23 films or TV shows where he guest starred as himself. Name as many of those appearances as you can. (laughs) Sue, Futurama. Futurama is one. 
community? Community is another, yes. Um, the captains? <laughs> the captains, the captains. Uh, As in the documentary? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's in that. <laughs> I didn't, that one didn't come up, no. So we'll, you, That's we'll, fair. we'll give you. I was out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you two points for that. Uh, buzz is back open. Brad? I'm going to take a, a wild guess and say The Simpsons, because everybody's been on The Simpsons at some point. Uh, yes, George has been in The Simpsons. Um, Five Big episodes. Bang Theory? Big Bang Theory, yep. Um. What the hell else would he have been in? Jeez Louise. Um, Boston Legal. No, not Boston Legal. No. So. <laughs> so again, this is where he's, he's guest starred as himself. So, sure. Aaron, do you know any of the others? Thinking, thinking. Not where he is himself. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll give you one of those. To comply. So two points, two points for Brad, two points for Sue out of a possible 23. I'll read, I'll read them all out to you. Um, so some of them you probably have no idea like I did. And I'm going from um, oldest to newest. Uh, the Bronx Bunny Show, Alienated, Watching Ellie, Homeboys in Outer Space, Third Rock from the Sun, Brotherly Love, Scrubs, Malcolm in the Middle, Will and Grace, Psych, Drawn Together, According to Jim, The Great Buck Hound, whatever that is, You Don't Mess with the Zohan, Party Down, Big Bang Theory, Community, Entourage, American Dad, The Simpsons, Futurama, Scooby-Doo, and guess who? Call Me Cat. So in all of those, he guest starred as George Takei. <laughs> All right, all right, which I thought was, I mean, I knew I'd seen him in a lot of guest role appearances as himself. It's a cheeky little thing he likes to do. I did not realize it was that many, and there could be more which were not on the IMDb page. So there we go. All right, second last one, uh, the TV show Transparent. Nope, nope. Unable to comply. So Tig Nataro was in that as a Barb. Uh, and the final one, Party of Five. Wait, original <laughs> Party of Five or new Party of Five? Oh, I didn't realize it was a new one. <laughs> I'm assuming it's the original. <laughs> oh, sorry, we had a buzzer. Sue? Yeah, Sue. Uh, just based on time, Jonathan DeLarco? Negative. No. Brad or Aaron, would you like to take a guess? Aaron? Anthony Rapp? <laughs> Negative. Oh, Br Brad, want to throw a name in the, into the hat? Um, 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 Robert Duncan McNeil. Uh, <laughs> no. Negative. It was Wilson Cruz uh, playing the character of Victor in about uh, about twelve episodes, apparently. So last name Vasquez. <laughs> last name Vasquez. Victor Vasquez. <laughs> uh, no, I'm afraid not. Okay, that was a challenging round as well. Hopefully, warp speed gets a little bit easier for everyone. But heading into the warp speed round, MC, where are we with the scores? Well, the last round, Aaron got three, Brad got four, and Sue got five, meaning that Brad is sitting at 8.5, while Aaron and Sue are tied 4.13. That is, that's close. That's very close heading into warp speed. So this is where we find out who our ultimate Trexpert for today is. Now, the warp speed round is 20 questions that will come at you 
Thick and fast. It is a full photon torpedo spread. Uh, I will ask the question. If I don't get a response within a few seconds, I will move on to the next question straight away. Same rules apply. You do need to buzz in to answer. Uh, and we're going back to general knowledge here in regards to all of our LGBTQ plus characters and actors. Hands on buzzers. Let's get into warp. What ship did Jet Reno serve on during the Klingon War? Aaron? Hiawatha? That is correct. Yes. What episode of Discovery showed Stamets and Culper kissing for the first time? Unable to comply. Into the forest I go. Which character from the film First Contact was established as gay in a Star Trek novel? Aaron? Lieutenant Hawk. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You're that correct. correct. <laughs> well done. Well done. Who said this? I have decided to let my child choose its own sex and a. <laughs> Brad. Data. That is correct. <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, in Enterprise, we learn that which species is polyamorous? Brad? Denobulans. That is correct. Which DS9 storyline problematically depicted bisexual behavior? Aaron? Every episode with Bashir <laughs> and Garrick. <laughs> Negative. Dang. <laughs> Afraid so badly want to give you a point for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buzzes, buzzes over and quick uh, prattle sewer if you think you know it. Unable to comply. The Mirror Universe storyline, and I say problematic because it depicted people who were bisexual or gay as, as evil and nefarious and all that kind of stuff, which was a bit of a trope at the time, especially yeah, for bisexual yeah. people. Uh, it is in Discovery. Yeah, true, true. In what episode does Quark say, this is no time for a changeling pride demonstration on the promenade? Unable to comply. Chimera. We first learn of Seven's queerness through hearing that she had a history with which character in the Picard episode Stardust? Who? I have to make sure I say it right. Bajazel. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, although I just want to call her Bedazzle. Um, <laughs> well done, well done. Adira was part of what organization before joining? Two? Earth Defense Force. That is correct. Well done. What is Rafi's full name? Two? Rafaela Musiker. That is correct. Well done. Dr. Culpa loves what type of opera? Brad? Hang on. <laughs> Negative. Uh, no, it is Castilian opera. Ugh, it's the worst. <laughs> 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 what was Paul Stamets' sexual identity in the Mirror Universe? Sue? Bisexual. Negative. Aaron? Pansexual? That is correct. Yes, and they had DEF CON level oh. fun together. <laughs> Dear. Uh, Grey left the Discovery to train on the Trill homeworld as what? Aaron? Uh, symbiont Guardian? That is correct. That is correct. What does Jet Reno pick off her pizza? Brad? Olives. <laughs> Negative. Anyone else? Aaron? Pineapple? <laughs> Negative. <laughs> Sue, do you know it? Anchovies. 
unable to comply. <laughs> Mushrooms. Uh, during an <laughs> argument with Stamets about the spore drive. In, a, in an alternate timeline, Seven was president of what? Rad. The Earth Confederacy? Or the Confederacy, excuse me. Mm, MC? I'll take your ruling. I, I'd say yeah. Hey, Confederation the Confeder is what they call it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. That's what bugged me about it because it was always like, it should be Confederacy, not Confederation. Sorry. Yeah. It was, yeah, Confederation of Earth. Raffi was addicted to smoking what substance? Aaron? Snake leaf? That is correct. Well done. What episode of Enterprise depicted an alien species that had a third gender? Sue? Cogenitor. That is correct. Paul Stamets had an Uncle Everett that sang in what type of band? Sue? A Beatles cover band. That is correct. Well Wait, done, really? well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that a guess? <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought I was making a joke. <laughs> Second last question. What rank is Dr. Culper? Brad? Lieutenant Commander. Negative. Sue? That is correct. Yes, Commander, correct. Well done. All right, we're going to slow down to impulse for the finale here. So prior to our recording today, you were asked to prepare an answer to the following question. Now, you're all going to give your example... And then MC is going to decide on which is the one that should be put into production. Um, probably would not be pitching any of these to Rick Berman, though. So, if you could rewrite any character in Star Trek's history to be part of the LGBTQIA plus rainbow, which would it be and why? Who would like to go first? Uh, I'm going to pick someone. Aaron? <laughs> okay. Um, Will Riker. I feel like Frakes would have been on board. I like a sex-positive guy who uh, will make a pass at anyone but takes no for an answer, and that's, uh, that's Riker. All right. There you go. Huh. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Uh, Sue? Um... I don't know if this is cheating, but my answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I say we flip the script, and I assume that everybody's queer until they tell me otherwise. Oh, okay. All right. C clever, clever. I like that. I like that. Uh, and Brad? I mean, mine is... Um... I could be like any of them, honestly. Um, there's so many characters. Look, on a selfish front, I would say Commander Tucker because he ran around in his <laughs> underwear all the time. And how are you not gay? Um, and it would mean that fictional Star Trek me had a better chance um, of making him my sweet love. Um, but my real answer would be uh, Captain Janeway, mainly because people were so like people, terrible people were so incensed about the idea of a female captain that making her a lesbian or at least bisexual would have just been even better because they would have lost their minds. Mm -hmm. And I would have loved to have seen um, in the episodes where we got to see Janeway, like, you know, walking around with a pulse rifle, like her walking around with a pulse rifle, but also like pulling a vixen close to her and grabbing a rope and then swinging. Uh, <laughs> and <then the> pirate <laughs> so Janeway would be my answer. Yeah. Delete the husband and or wife. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. All good examples. So MC, we've got Riker, Janeway, or everyone. Um... <laughs> oh my god, those are such uh, good and like yes, really to good. all of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. But I liked the passion. Brad, I like pissing off people who don't like 
queer representation. So I got to give you the point on that. There we go. <laughs> well done. Well done. All right. So that brings us to the end of the game. So MC, it was a close one. It was a very, very close one. Very, very close one. Who came out on top? Who's our winner? Well, Brad had a very respectable 12.5. Well done, well done. Aaron had 18. And Sue had 19. Oh, yes. (laughs) That was, yeah. (laughs) I don't think... I've had a warp speed round like that before. Usually someone tears right out in front. It never comes right down to the wire like that. So, Sue, congratulations. How does it feel? Give us your victory speech. I'd like to thank Celia Rose Gooding. (laughs) Bless. (laughs) No, this was a lot of fun. And I, the, it's different kind of Star Trek trivia than we usually get. (laughs) <laughs> so I think, you know, that that certainly slowed me down a little bit. I don't know about everybody else, but it was it was a great competition. Excellent. A lot of fun. <laughs> it was. It was. This is a good way to start the second season. That was great. And our our first alternate, Aaron. <laughs> well, give us your, your your concession speech. Um, you know, I think it was a great run. We were neck. I was neck and neck with uh, Sue and. Um, I gotta say that like it's this format is is different than other like Trek trivia because there's there's a lot like outside of the show that we cover and I always come away learning something and I really like that so um, I don't consider it a loss I consider it uh, just a really good time with some cool people. Ah, oh, what a beautiful answer. Thank you. Thank you. And and Brad, your final words. I mean, there were some hard questions up in this quiz this time around. FYI. And well done on the research. Um, I hate losing anything. <laughs> um in this case, I'm totally fine with it because, geez louise, y'all whipped out some knowledge and it was very impressive. Like, Sue, literally, when you turned to grab the book, <laughs> I was like, well, this is done. Um, but kudos to Sue and Aaron both. I mean, y'all were amazing. And your behind the scenes knowledge, I don't have that. <laughs> so I'm in awe of everything you did. Congratulations to both of you. <laughs> Well done. It's, I must admit, that that is probably a moment I've been waiting for on this show is for someone to disagree with me. Or, or you, you weren't really disagreeing with me, but like for someone to be like, oh, I know this. Hang on. Grab the book. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done all. That was a lot of fun. And, and Sue, you take out the first Ultimate Trexpert title for season two. So congratulations. Well done. Thank so. You. Let's do a quick round uh, before we close out for today of where everyone can find you and your work online. And I will start with our amazing scorekeeper. She always does such a fabulous job and I love having her on the show. MC. Uh, You can find me across all social media as MC Frodo's branding is important. Um, I have a YouTube channel, which I've been bad at updating, but I'll get better. And I am live Thursday nights at 9.30 Eastern on Strange New Pod. Obviously, right now we are reviewing Strange New Worlds because that's where our show name comes from. And come check us out. Excellent. Thank you. And do check out Strange New Pod and anything MC is involved with, including the headcanon minutes as well. They're some of my favorites. Um, Yeah. Uh, We'll go. Let's go Brad next. I have nothing. (laughs) <laughs> i mean you can find me on twitter at brad pritchett or on instagram at brad pritch um i just show up to stuff when it pops up so i host nothing i go nowhere um but when people ask me to show up to something i will always do it for trek um so yeah thanks 
Excellent. And, and of course, I would encourage uh, any of our Texan listeners to definitely check out the work, the work that you're doing with, with Equality in Texas. It is amazing. And Aaron, where can the Trixpits find you? You can find uh, me and my wife, Kelly, at the Spinal Frontier podcast. We're on Instagram and YouTube and Tumblr uh, at Spinal Frontier Pod. And uh, we've got some good stuff coming down the pipe after a bit of a hiatus. So, Excellent, excellent. And yeah, I, I, I did notice I haven't seen Spinal Frontier for a while, but there is an amazing back catalog out there where where Aaron and their partner dive in to... Well, why some Star Trek aliens are the way they are and how they would have evolved that way, really getting into the science behind, um, you know, the fiction. So really, really fun stuff. And finally, our winner, our ultimate expert for today, Sue, tell us where we can find you and your work online. Or, um, you can find me on Twitter, technically, at Speltor, S-P-A-L-T-O-R, although it is not very active at the moment. Uh, as for Women at Warp, we're at womenatwarp.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Women at Warp, because branding is important. <laughs> and um, we have a whole episode from a while back about the novelization of the motion picture. So if you want to learn more about it, go listen to that episode. I forget what number it is. <laughs> Amazing. Also, the cat trying to climb onto my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Just congratulating you on your win. <laughs> Well, well done, everyone. And as always, uh, I encourage all of my listeners and viewers to go out and and find your your work uh, if they have not done so already, uh, because there is just such a wealth of amazing Star Trek and LGBTQ plus content out there. So please get amongst it, everyone. And finally, for my listeners, if you were screaming out some of the answers today that our contestants did not know, and you think that you can do better, then why not put your latinum where your mouth is? You can register to be a contestant on season two of the quiz by heading over to trexpertsquiz.com and filling out the form on the website. Make sure you follow the show on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook by searching for Trexperts Quiz. And you can also email directly trexpertsquiz at gmail.com. Welcome all your feedback, quiz ideas, or just to say hello. Don't forget that the Trexperts Quiz is part of a bigger network of shows called the BQN. Uh, Don't forget to check out some of the other amazing shows on the network, such as All Good Things, Galaxy Class, History with the Zalagis, Infinite Diversity, Mickey's Marvels, Sasquatch, What's the Tea Bev, Cinema Z, Captain's Couch, and my other show, The Bargain Bin Gamer, spelt G-A-Y-M-E-R. You can find any or all of these by searching for the BQN Master Feed wherever you get your podcasts from, and you can interact with all the BQN hosts, including myself, over on our BQN Collective Facebook page. So that is it for now. Make sure you tune in again next time, and be sure to leave us a five-star review. Until we meet again... Remember that no matter where you go, and no matter what you do, make sure you go boldly with pride. Live long and prosper. Woo!